Okay, so now we have everything in, in units of pound per hour. We can more easily compare it to our tables. So the first thing we're going to see here is that our engine RPM and our idle desired RPM, they're pretty much on point. We can see that we're, we're hitting it within uh, 10 or 20 RPM, so that is uh, doing very well right now with the control. Now if we look, we can see our idle desired airflow here is at 72.9 pound per hour. But we can go back into our table here. Uh, let's look at our coolant temperature real quick to figure out the coolant temperature. That, uh, 185 is our coolant temp. So our coolant temperature and our uh, base running airflow, I'm going to be in my park neutral position. I'm in the 180 section right here. So I'm in park neutral, jumping into 176, 198 degree temp range right here. I should be running at 56.4 base idle airflow. If we jump back in, and go back up to the top here, we're going to see that our idle base park neutral airflow is 56, what we found from the table, but I'm here at 73.2, and it's doing that because it needs to get back to this desire idle here, and that the base idle airflow table needs to be updated. It actually is too low of a value in it. So if we look, we see our idle adaptive short-term idle trim here. It's taking out negative uh, one pound per hour, and then we see our long-term idle trim gear AC off is adding 11 pound per hour, and then our long-term idle trim park neutral is adding 17 pound per hour. So what it's doing is, using this, because I'm in park neutral AC off, I'm, I'm going into this long-term idle trim, I'm adding 17 pound per hour to 56, and then I'm getting back to this range here of 74 pound per hour. That's how we're getting this value here. And then if we go into gear, we're gonna find that our uh, gear idle airflow here is at 63 pound per hour from the table if we jump back in. That's going to be at that same break point here, same uh, coolant temp, 63.5. That's what it's reporting. We can see it's uh, 63. It's actually not going to the next decimal place. It's uh, only it's rounding to a, an even number here. Uh, but looking at this, that's where that, that value comes from. And when we go into that situation, our long-term idle trim is going to be 11 pound per hour here. So we're going to be adding these up, and that would be our a new idle desire airflow. So our goal here is to get our base idle airflow so that the long-term data here is going to be as close to zero as possible, and then our short-term is as close to zero as possible. Now, this isn't doing much of anything right now, uh, as far as trimming goes, because this long-term idle trim has already been applying this factor, and we're relatively steady uh, idle speed here, and our idle desire airflow is pretty consistent. So you're not going to see the short term doing much of anything right now. But what this tells me is that my base idle airflow table needs to be increased at least 10 per hour, 10 pound per hour across the whole table so that my long term here isn't adding any additional uh, long term trim. We want to keep these as close to zero as possible, it's just like our fuel trims. 